In this lecture, we are going to discuss finer points of the Galois correspondence. We begin with the following proposition. Let E be a Galois extension and let K1 and K2 two intermediate subfields. Corresponding to subgroups H1 and H2 in the Galois group of E over F. Then the intersection of these two subgroups corresponds to a subfield K1, K2, which is a subfield which is generated by both K1 and K2. So let us write down what is this K1 times K2. So this is the sum over i of products xi, yi, where xi belongs to K1 and yi belongs to K2. Because all extensions uh, here are algebraic, this set is going to be closed under inversion. To prove this proposition, we need to show the equality that uh, H1 intersected with H2 is the Galois group of E over K1 times K2. If sigma belongs to H1 intersection with H2, this means that sigma restricted to K1 is identity, and the sigma restricted to K2 is identity. But then it's clear that sigma restricted to the product K1, K2 is also identity, and thus sigma belongs to the Galois group of E over K1 times K2. Conversely, so if sigma belongs to the Galois group of uh, E over K1 times K2, so this means that sigma restricted to K1 times K2 is identity, but both K1 and K2 are subfields inside K1 times K2, so this means that sigma restricted to K1 is identity, and uh, sigma restricted to K2 is identity, and uh, the first tells us that sigma belongs to H1, and the second says that sigma belongs to H2. So we get that sigma belongs to the intersection of H1 with H2, and this completes the proof of the proposition. And the second proposition says that uh, in the same setting, the product of two subgroups corresponds to the intersection of the subfields. Here, the product of two subgroups is a smaller subgroup that contains both H1 and H2. So H1, H2 is the set of elements F1, G1, F2, G2, dot, 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 Fn, Gn, where Fi's belong to H1 and Gi's belong to H2. Let's give a proof. We note that an element alpha belongs to K1 if and only if alpha is an element of E which is fixed by all elements of H1. Likewise, alpha belongs to K2 if and only if alpha is an element of E which is fixed by all elements of H2. So then we get that alpha belongs to the intersection of K1 and K2, if and only if alpha is fixed by both H1 and H2. And this is equivalent to saying that alpha is fixed 
by the product of these subgroups, H1 times H2. So our conclusion that K1 intersection with K2 is a subfield in E which is fixed by H1 times H2. And in Galois correspondence, this subfield corresponds to this subgroup in the Galois group of E over F. Our next theorem is the main result of this lecture, and it says that if the intermediate field is normal over F, then the corresponding subgroup is a normal subgroup in the Galois group of E over F. Let us recall the definition of a normal subgroup. A subgroup H in G is called normal if for every G in the group G, the conjugate G H G inverse is equal to H. Let us state the theorem. Let E be a Galois extension of F with Galois group G, which is the Galois of E over F. Let K be an intermediate field so F is contained in K and K is contained in E with H being the Galois group of E over K. Then K is normal over F if and only if H is a normal subgroup in G. And the notation for this is the following. If indeed K is normal over F, then the map sigma goes to restriction of sigma to K is a group homomorphism from the group G to the Galois group of K over F with kernel H. And uh, we have that the Galois group of uh, K over F is isomorphic to the quotient of G by the normal subgroup H. Let's give a proof of this theorem. Suppose K is normal over F. Then for every sigma in the Galois group of E over F, we will have that sigma of K is equal to K. This is the property of normal extensions that they are invariant under embedding of K into F bar. This tells us that every element of uh, the Galois group of E over F defines an element of the Galois group of K over F. And so we have uh, a group homomorphism from the Galois group of E over F to the Galois group of K over F. So given by this restriction to K. Let's call this projection pi and let's ask what is the kernel 
of pi. This is the set of all sigma in G such that sigma restricted to K is identity. But that's precisely the group H. And we know that kernels of group homomorphisms are normal subgroups. So this tells us that H is normal in G. By homomorphism extension theorem, every sigma in Galois group of uh, k over f extends to the mapping sigma hat of e into f bar. But since e is normal over f, we will have that sigma hat of e is equal to e and we get sigma hat in the Galois group of e over f such that sigma hat restricted to k is equal to sigma. We conclude from this that the map pi is surjective and by homomorphism theorem we have that G quotient by the kernel of pi is isomorphic to the image of pi which uh, tells us that uh, the quotient group of G by H is indeed isomorphic to the Galois group of K over F. This establishes the second claim of this theorem. Next we need to prove the converse of our first claim and show that if the subgroup H is normal, then K is a normal extension of F. We assume that H is a normal subgroup in G. Let sigma be an arbitrary field embedding of k into f bar. To prove that k is normal over f, we need to show that sigma of k is equal to k. By homomorphism extension theorem, we can extend sigma to the embedding sigma hat of E into F bar. And since E is normal over F, we get that sigma hat of E is equal to E and uh, this tells us that the sigma hat is an element of G which is the Galois group of E over F. We have that K is uh, E stabilized by H. So this is the set of all X in E such that for all tau in H we have tau of X is equal to X. But then sigma of K is uh, the set of Y in E such that for all tau in H sigma tau sigma inverse applied to y is equal to y. So to see this just set y to be sigma of x. But then this says that sigma of k 
is uh, a subfield which is stabilized by the group sigma h sigma inverse. But h is a normal subgroup in G and when we conjugate it we get itself. So this field is equal to E h and by Galois correspondence this is k. So we proved that sigma of k is equal to k and hence k is a normal extension of f. Let us state the following corollary. Let E be a Galois extension with abelian or respectively cyclic Galois group. Then any intermediate field K between F and E is normal over F and uh, Galois groups E over K and Galois group of K over F are both abelian or respectively cyclic. This uh, immediately follows uh, from the result in group theory that in abelian group any subgroup is normal and uh, a subgroup of an abelian group is abelian and the quotient of an abelian group is abelian. And the same is true for cyclic groups. A subgroup of a cyclic group is cyclic and the quotient of a cyclic group is cyclic as well. Our next theorem is illustrated with the following diagram. We have two field extensions, K and E. And so these are extensions of a field F. And here we have the intersection, K intersected with E. And then we construct a composite field, KE, which is generated by K and E together. Let us state this theorem. Theorem. Let E be a Galois extension. of a field F and let K be an arbitrary extension of F. We assume that both K and E belong to some larger algebraically closed field L. Form the product K times E inside L. Then the extension of K to K times E is a Galois extension and for element sigma of the Galois group of Ke over K, the restriction map sigma goes to sigma restricted to E is uh, an isomorphism of uh, Galois groups of uh, Ke over k to the Galois group of E over the intersection of E with k. As a corollary, 
we get that if the extension E of F is Galois, then the degree of the extension of Ke over K for any field K is a divisor of uh, the degree of E over F. So here, the degree of Ke over K is equal to the order of the Galois group of Ke over K. And by this theorem, it's a subgroup inside the Galois group of E over F, which has order of E over F. And then by Lagrange's theorem, the degree of Ke over K is a divisor of the degree of E over F. Let's uh, point out that uh, it is essential in this corollary that this extension F to E is Galois. Otherwise, this claim may not hold. And let us uh, look at the following example. So we take F to be Q and E be Q extended with the cube root of 2, which is not a Galois extension. As K, let us take Q with uh, cube root of 2 times e to the 2 pi i over 3. This is uh, a field extension which is isomorphic to e but different from it. Then ke is the extension of q with both cube root of 2 and e to the 2 pi i over 3. And then we see that the degree of ke over e is equal to 2 and the degree of E over F is equal to 3. And in this example, 2 is not a divisor of 3. Let us give the proof of this theorem. So let us show that Ke is normal over K. Let sigma be an embedding of uh, Ke into L over K. This means that sigma restricted to K is identity. And uh, what we need to show to prove normality of this extension is that sigma of Ke is equal to Ke. But since sigma restricted to K is identity, then sigma restricted to F is also identity. And E is normal over F. So this implies that sigma of E is equal to E. But since sigma restricted to K is identity, then sigma of k certainly is equal to k. And then we conclude that sigma of ke is equal to sigma of k times sigma of e and is equal to ke. Let us now show that ke is uh, finite and separable over k. By primitive element theorem, we can write E as f of alpha for some alpha in E. But then ke is k extended with the same element alpha. Let f be the minimal polynomial of alpha over f and g be the minimal polynomial of the same alpha but now over k. If we take the greatest common divisor 
of these two polynomials in k of x, we see that this greatest common divisor is different from 1 because these two polynomials share a root alpha and because g is irreducible in k of x, we conclude that this greatest common divisor is equal to g. So g is uh, a divisor of f since e is uh, separable over f, the polynomial little f has uh, no multiple roots. And hence g has no multiple roots. And this is exactly the criterion for separability for extensions with a single element. So what we see is that uh, the extension of Ke is separable over K and the degree of this extension is less or equal to the degree of E over F because uh, the first degree is the degree of the polynomial G and the second degree is the degree of the polynomial F and G is a divisor of F. This proves that Ke is a Galois extension over K. Having proved that Ke is the Galois extension, let us take sigma in the Galois group of Ke over K. This means that sigma restricted to k is uh, identity. But we have that E is normal over f. So this tells us that sigma of E is equal to E. Then the map from uh, element sigma to sigma restricted to E is a group homomorphism from the Galois group of Ke over K to the Galois group of E over F. Now let us think what could be the kernel of this map. So suppose tau belongs to the kernel of pi. This means that tau restricted to E is the identity map. But we know that any element of this Galois group restricted to K is also the identity. So tau restricted to K is also the identity. And then this tells us that tau restricted to the product of these two fields is identity. But then this means that tau is identity element in the Galois group of Ke over K. So this means that the kernel of pi is the identity element and the map pi is injective. Now let us decide what's the image of pi. If mu belongs to the image of pi, then uh, this implies that mu restricted to the intersection of E with K is identity. This is because any element of the Galois group of Ke over K is identity on K and thus it's also identity on the intersection. So this means that mu belongs to the subgroup which is the Galois group of E over the intersection with K. This tells us that the intersection E with K sits uh, inside uh, the fixed points of E under the action of the image of pi. Let us show the opposite inclusion. Let alpha be an element in E which is fixed by every element of the image of pi. But then if we treat alpha as an element of k times e, 
we see that alpha is fixed by every element of the Galois group Ke over K. Because every element in the image of pi comes from the element of this Galois group. But the elements of Ke that are fixed by every element of this Galois group are in K. So we conclude that alpha belongs to K and thus alpha belongs to the intersection of E with K. And then we conclude that we have equality here, that E intersection with K is uh, the fixed points in E under the image of pi. So the image of pi is a subgroup in the Galois group of uh, E over F, which uh, corresponds to the subfield E intersected with K. And by Galois correspondence theorem, we see that the image of pi is um, the Galois group of E over E intersection with K. And now we prove that pi is injective and uh, we computed its image. So this means that uh, the group on the left, the Galois group of uh, Ke over K is isomorphic to the image of pi, which is the Galois group of E over E intersected with K. And that's precisely the claim of our theorem. Our next theorem describes the situation when we have two Galois extensions of the field F. We have the following theorem. Let E1 and E2 be two Galois extensions of F. Then E1 times E2 is also a Galois extension of F. Let GI be the Galois group of EI over F, where I is 1 or 2. Consider maps pi i from the Galois group of E1 times E2 over F to the Galois group of EI over F by restriction to EI. Then the Galois group of E1 times E2 over F is a subgroup in the product of G1 times G2 with embedding given by pi1 cross pi2. If the intersection of E1 with E2 is equal to F, then this Galois group of E1 times E2 over F is isomorphic to the direct product of G1 with G2. Let us give the proof of this theorem. First, we are going to prove that E1 times E2 is a Galois extension of F. To show that E1 times E2 is normal over F, consider an embedding sigma of E1 times E2 into L, where L is an algebraically closed field that contains both E1 and E2. Since each of the extensions E1 and E2 are normal, we have that sigma of E1 is equal to E1 and sigma of E2 is equal to E2. But then sigma 
of E1 times E2 is equal to sigma of E1 times sigma of E2 and is equal to E1, E2. So this means that E1, E2 is normal over F. In the previous theorem, which proved that E1 times E2 is finite and uh, separable over E2. But now we have a chain of extensions. So we have E1 over E2 is finite and separable over E2 and E2 is finite and separable over F. So by chain of extensions we get that E1 times E2 is finite and separable over F. So this means that uh, E1 times E2 is Galois over F. If we take sigma to be the element of the Galois group of E1 times E2 over F, then sigma of E1 will be E1 and sigma of E2 will be E2 since E1 and E2 are normal over F. We get the group homomorphisms pi i from the Galois group of E1 times E2 over F into Galois groups of each EI over F. We can take the direct product of these two homomorphisms. So pi 1 cross pi 2 will be the map from the Galois group of uh, E1 times E2 over F into the direct product of Galois group of E1 over F times the Galois group of E2 over F. So in the first component, the projection is given by pi 1, and in the second component, it's uh, pi 2. Let's look at the kernel of this homomorphism. Suppose sigma belongs to the kernel of pi 1 cross pi 2. So this means that sigma restricted to E1 is identity, and sigma restricted to E2 is identity. But then sigma restricted to the product E1 times E2 is also identity, which means that sigma is the identity element of this Galois group. So we conclude that the kernel of uh, pi 1 cross pi 2 is uh, the identity element. So this map is injective. And this tells us that the Galois group of E1 times E2 over F is isomorphic to a subgroup inside G1 cross G2. Now let us prove the last claim of the theorem. So we assume that E1 intersection with E2 is equal to F. Then by previous theorem we have that the Galois group of E1 times E2 over E2 is isomorphic to the Galois group of E1 over F. This means that for every sigma in uh, G1, 
there exists a sigma hat in the Galois group of E1 times E2 over E2 such that sigma hat restricted to E1 is equal to sigma. But then what is pi1 cross pi2 applied to sigma hat? So this is going to be the pair pi1 of uh, sigma hat and pi2 of sigma hat. By this property pi1 of sigma hat is equal to sigma. And because uh, sigma hat belongs to the Galois group over E2, so this means that restriction of sigma hat to E2 is equal to identity. So this tells us that the image of pi1 cross pi2 contains g1 cross identity. Likewise, we get that the same image will contain identity cross g2. But these two subgroups generate the full group g1 cross g2. So this tells us that the Galois group of uh, E1 times E2 over F is isomorphic to G1 cross G2. This is of course under the assumption that the intersection of these two extensions is uh, the field F.